Friends, welcome back. I am thrilled that you're here, and uh, we're, we're just about done with this course, and today we're going to talk about trials. Obviously, if you're taking this course, you've probably uh, experienced several trials. <laughs> that might be one reason why you're here, is to figure out how to live a life following a trial. Now, um, we're going to obviously uh, use our foundation of belief windows, and you know this. A lot of people wonder where trials come from or why they've been afflicted. Unfortunately, some people have some incorrect beliefs on their belief windows about the purposes of their trials or the source of their trials. Today, I want to talk about the four origins of trials. And to be honest, I, I feel like our Heavenly Father sometimes gets, a, gets kind of a bad rap where people blame him uh, for everything. And let me let me guide you through this. So first of all, please know that some trials happen because we live in a telestial world. Things happen. <laughs> we have, you know, cells that don't divide right. We have chromosomes that don't align, and we have different maladies and conditions and cancers and you know, um, people born with special needs, some some handicaps, things like that. It's just part of our telestial world. Um, it just it happens. Um, President Hinckley, quoting uh, Jenkins Lloyd-Jones, said this, anyone who imagines that bliss is normal is going to waste a lot of time running around shouting that he's been robbed. The fact is mo most putts don't drop. Most beef is tough. Most children grow up to be just people. Most successful marriages require a high degree of mutual toleration. <laughs> and most jobs are more often dull than otherwise. Life is like an old time journey. Delays, sidetracks, smoke, dust, cinders, jolts, interspersed only occasionally by beautiful vistas and thrilling bursts of speed. The trick is to thank the Lord for letting you have the ride. Oh, I love that. I love that. Again, things are going to happen because we live in a fallen telestial world. Another source of trials, um, sometimes they're just self-inflicted. We make dumb mistakes. We are short-sighted. Uh, we're clumsy. Um, we just mess up. That's part of being mortal. Okay. A third source of trials are those that come through other people. Now, oh, these can be tough. I mean, all of these are tough, but this is when people misuse their agency and cause afflictions in the lives of other people. And boy, we can talk about, um, you know, people that get intoxicated or high on drugs and then drive their vehicle and cause an accident abuse, um, rape. I mean, the list, um, I mean, child pornography, the list is, is so long when people misuse their agency, uh, to the detriment of other people. When my wife and I were dating, she shared this quote uh, with me. She had found it and said, Eric, this, this sounds a lot like you. <clears throat> uh, God actively intervenes in some destructive lineages assigning a valiant spirit to break the chain of destructiveness in such families. And although these children may suffer innocently as victims of violence or neglect or exploitation, through the grace of God, some find the strength to metabolize the poison within themselves, refusing to pass it on to future generations. Before them were generations of destructive pain, but after them, the line flows clear and pure. Their children and their children's children will call them blessed. Now, some of you know people like this, where they grew up in the toughest of environments, and they turned out to be great people. In fact, you might want to um, maybe take a, a screenshot of this if you're watching, or even look up this quote. It's Calfred Broderick, Ensign, October 86. It's beautiful. And maybe share it with someone that's, uh, that's one of those valiant people. Uh, although you might have grown up in a, in a tough environment, I testify that you can metabolize that poison inside of you and that you can grow up to be great despite some of the things that you were born with. I testify of that. Now, the final source of trials is uh, simply put that God will send trials our way. He will. That's part of his, uh, his process to help us become more like him. He's going to allow things to happen in our lives, but He's going to be there to support us as well. A couple of statements that you've heard, but let me remind you. Elder Neil A. Maxwell, who battled leukemia before his death, he was a member of our Quorum of Twelve Apostles. He said, let us remember that we were measured before we were born 
and we were found equal to all of our tasks. There's nothing that you and I will ever face that will be too much for us if we maintain our faith in our Savior and if we reach out to the appropriate help. Orson F. Whitney, classic statement here. No pain that we suffer, no trial that we endure is ever wasted. All that we suffer and all that we endure will make us more like our father and mother in heaven. What a great truth, you guys. And I testify, he's able to extract every ounce of possible goodness from even the most horrific situations and use it to our betterment. And how he does that, I don't know, but I'm so grateful that he does. I love Mosiah 24, 15. It says uh, that we should cheerfully submit to anything that the Lord sees fit to inflict upon us. That phrase, cheerfully submit, oh, it's so good. I'm reminded of uh, our old secretary's sister, Hester, who um, had a diagnosis of uh, pancreatic cancer. And boy, we tried to we tried to serve her and love her. And we even bought her flowers one day. And she stopped and said, no. She said, if... If Heavenly Father thinks that I am strong enough to endure pancreatic cancer, then I count myself as one of the luckiest girls in the world. <laughs> she was beautiful and positive despite her trials. Brothers and sisters, can I invite you to cheerfully submit? Maybe the belief on your belief window is that you can cheerfully submit. You can allow trials to shape you. You can grow from trials, but you don't have to have a bitter outlook about the trial because of our Savior's atonement. If you've been challenged with sickness or addiction or depression or loneliness or fear, if you feel defeated or average, ordinary, worthless, crippled or forgotten, please stay trusting, be optimistic, be patient, be hopeful, be focused. I promise he's planned your increase, your freedom, your wholeness, your victory, and your happiness. Trust his power. Trust his promises. Trust his timing. Trust his kindness. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You are his treasure. You are the children of the promise. You are the elect of God. If you want to have emotional wellness through your trials, trust those promises. Yes, trials are hard. They are hard, whether they be because of our fallen world or through our own clumsiness or through other people, or if God allows things to happen, I testify you can get through them because of our Savior's atonement. I testify of him and that you can get through your trials successfully in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.